Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Demetrius here again from Obi Pixel. It's been a while since I've done a video. Uh, I've been really busy. It's one of the busiest times of the year, so I haven't made many YouTube videos. But I wanted to give you a quick little update as to how my journey is going when it comes to the Lion Diet and uh, the ups and downs that I've had in the last uh, well month and a half. Today will be the day that I mark 250 days on the lion diet and I'm um, very proud of it because it also marks my birthday. Today is also my birthday. I've turned 51 today and I feel fantastic. I am doing things I could never do. I am able to uh, sleep a lot less. I'm able to handle things in life a lot easier. I'm much more calm in life. I have far more clarity. You've seen my previous videos. There's so many benefits. The last couple of um, days, say between, <clears throat> well, the last 30 days have been really interesting. The challenge is always tricky because when you're at home, you can easily control your food intake. It's a lot easier. When you travel the way I do, it's always a little trickier because I have to keep on going to different locations around the world and uh, hotels and, you know, it's not that simple sometimes to go to a place and say, hey, by the way, can you cook me a ribeye steak, you know, because <laughs> the lion diet's quite restrictive and I'm very proud that I've made it to 250 days. It's actually not that easy to do. It's been actually surprisingly easy to do up to last month. Up to last month and uh, last month i found it very tricky i found it quite challenging purely because of the lots of travel and it was tra it was challenging because the locations you go to when you travel they don't often have the right foods that you want let alone the lion diet request that i want which is purely just red meat and uh, in some locations there were there was no way to have that uh there was only carbs and that kind of thing so i had to resort to a couple of times i know this sounds crazy for the last 51 years that i've been on this planet i have never had mcdonald's never until last month <laughs> i sort of broke my cardinal rule when it comes to not eating fast foods but i did something different at mcdonald's which was surprisingly useful to do i didn't know that you could do this but essentially what happened was I went to McDonald's and I said, okay, can you, can you make me 20 hamburger patties? Like, you know, they're, they're very small hamburger patties. So 20 will cover me for like a meal. I know it sounds like a lot, but believe me, it's nowhere near the size of a steak. If you even have 20 little burger patties, but I said, can you just make me 20 burger patties and that's it. And you know, they're, they're a bit reluctant, but they were fine. They did it fine. They had no problems. It took a little longer than normal, but I managed to get uh, a few times, not just once or twice, but you know, when I when I calculate the number of jobs I've been on the last sort of month, uh, I'd say I'd say I did that about seven or eight times, seven or eight days out of that situation, and um, it got me out of a jam quite a few times. Now, it's not ideal because you're not going to get the perfect amount of fat intake because. Strangely enough, I can't believe I'm saying this. The actual burger patties from from um, from McDonald's, they're not bad. They're actually 100% beef, which is surprising. They don't add any extra salts or, or or peppers or any kind of spices, which is really surprising. And and that was quite unusual to see. So effectively, when you buy a McDonald's burger, you, the worst stuff is not really the burger patty. The worst stuff is everything else. So that was pretty cool. So I managed to get and keep my meat intake at the right place, but I did have to supplement with um, water and electrolytes because I had to have my magnesium, my sodium, which is the salts and all that, and zinc and all that inside the water. Otherwise, I'd have, I'd have a problem those weeks. And um, <clears throat> the repercussions of that is that my weight balanced up and down. So I gained one or two kilos, dropped one or two kilos, gained one or three kilos, dropped one or three kilos. It was sort of fluctuating. And I think it's not really the fat that was fluctuating because there's no way that a human can lose that amount of fat within a week. 
I think what was fluctuating is my water retention. And uh, I'm almost positive, really, because my physical body through this process, through this last 30 days, hasn't changed in size. In fact, it's reduced and I feel more lighter and tighter um, as a body and I'm feeling much looser in my clothes. And during those 30 days when I was dealing with washing clothes, I wasn't doing anything like washing in hot water, I was washing in cold water. So it wasn't as if the clothes were shrinking but i did feel that i was starting to fit better in my clothes so the funny thing is the weight increases and the weight drops were not really fat because body composition wise i've stayed the same throughout the 30 days i haven't lost or any gained any kind of additional body size and mass you know like front area and the stomach area uh front area moves as we say for men that kind of thing I, I, none of that changed but what did change is the weight fluctuation. So I was like, that's surprising. And I realized it's got to be the wet uh, water retention and not enough sodium and not enough fat intake. What I did notice, however, in those 30 days, because I wasn't taking enough fat intake, I did have a couple of problems or I say problems, but a couple of scenarios. Some of the days I wasn't being as regular in, in, in the toilet as I should have been in bowel movements. I'm sorry, I'm saying these on video, but uh, it's, it's, it's predominantly the fat intake because as soon as I started doubling up on the fat intake, just chewing on butter and eating a bit of cheese, you know, that made the difference. So I noticed these changes and you know, it's, it's nice to know an experiment. The other thing that I did in the last 20 days out of the 30 days is that I added coffee back into the mix, but I don't have coffee every day. That, that's insane. I obviously I've given coffee up many years ago, but what I did is I added coffee as a treat as once a week at the end of the week on a Friday and, um, you know, black coffee, that's it. No milk or anything like that. And if I do have milk, fine, it'll be a latte, uh, latte coffee, but I added the coffee in for the last 20 days and I didn't see any fluctuations whatsoever in my water retention, fat, uh, weight, that kind of thing. So to me, coffee doesn't influence me in any way. Obviously, if I added sugar, which I don't because I haven't had sugars in 250 days, um, then I would notice the difference, but I didn't. And I was quite content with having a coffee a week. I mean, another, a lot of people will go, what? You're having one coffee a week, not one coffee a day or four coffees a day. No, one is enough. It's a, it's a lovely treat. Um, and I may increase it to maybe twice a week. I don't think I will, but I might. And at the end of the day, it's just something a little extra that your body can have so you can break away from, uh, I wouldn't say the monotonous, monotonous eating, but I'd say, you know, you don't want to have uh, a life where you're doing all this kind of extreme stuff so you can get healthier and then you're not living, you're not enjoying things in life. Now, will I ever take sugar into the body again? Natural sugars, no, probably not even unnatural sugars, things like, you know, normal cane sugar, brown sugar, that kind of stuff, forget it, that's never going to happen. Uh, will I ever take in fruits once again in my life? If I ever take any fruits in my body ever again, it'll either be in the form of an avocado, which is kind of like a vegetable fruit, or it potentially might be a kiwi something that has high vitamin C, which I may do on occasion. I don't think I will in the first year of doing the line diets. So I've got a long way to go till February next year because I started this routine February the 19th this year, 2024. And today is officially 250 days. Well, yesterday was, but I'm doing the video today. And, uh, I, you know, I haven't had sugar since then. So I haven't had fruits since then either. So I don't think I'm going to do it until February. I think in Feb I'm going to have that particular type of fruit. Although today's my birthday and I can have anything. I should really spoil myself, but nah, I'm not interested in doing that because it doesn't bother me that I'm not having fruit. I may introduce possibly one or two, um, maybe next year, one or two vegetables. But when I say vegetables, I mean things that I grow. So I will probably put in a pot here where I'll grow two things. One, a tomato, because that's one thing I don't really have a craving for, but I do miss it. And then potentially some form of garlic or onion. I mean, I eat garlic now with the steaks, but I don't eat a lot like I used to. I may just include a little bit of garlic or some onions in it just as an extra uh, sort of vegetable. Um, 
I don't know if I'm going to do anything else after that, but I'm because I'm doing so well and I'm so happy with the results. Now, the other sort of change that has happened is I'm now officially on a one time a day eating plan. I it's not a diet for me. The funny thing is I eat once a day and I don't feel hungry for the next almost 24 hours. So I'm literally on a 22 hour keto. So I don't eat for 22 hours. And then when the time comes for the meal, I will spend roughly one and a half hours eating a meal. And when I eat a meal, I don't play games with a meal. I will more than likely drop two steaks, like not just one steak, but like two steaks. I will drop those two steaks. Now, people have argued with me online and they've said, why don't you just split the meals out between one of the day in the morning or in the midday lunch and then one in the evening or something like that. Funny enough, that's what I used to do. And the crazy thing is that I was, I was trying that, but I was feeling very satiated during the day and I didn't want to eat a second meal because my body's got to the stage right now, which it doesn't crave for the meal. And I've listened to the hunger pains. I know when my body's hungry, my body tells me like I feel like I'm salivating, like I'm like, oh, I've got to have that steak now. That's when your body wants to eat. When you don't feel like eating, your body's telling you you don't feel like eating, right? So at the end of the day now, I've reached a 22 hour keto and um, eating for two hours of the day roughly and I'm not eating for 22 hours and I feel absolutely fantastic. And here's the funny thing. It doesn't really matter anymore whether I eat early in the morning or whether I eat in midday or whether I eat quite late in the afternoon or even very late in the evening. Because the funny thing is, even if I eat, say, four or five hours or three hours before I sleep, it doesn't pack onto my body like, you know, normal carbs would. That's why people say you shouldn't eat two to three hours before you sleep. Yeah, because that's because you're eating carbs. It's not because of meat intake, because I noticed that even if I eat quite late at night, like 11 o'clock at night, I'll eat like 11 o'clock at night and go to bed at one in the morning. Right. And I don't have any reflux. I don't have any acid burn. I don't have any problems. I don't get any weight. I wake up in the morning and I'm less weight. You know, not by a lot, but two, three hundred grams. So it's like, wow, you know, so it doesn't in any way affect me having the meal any time of the day. So I can fluctuate. I don't have my meal every single day in the same time, although it would be a good idea to do that. But it's not I, I do it on purpose at different times because I listen to the hunger pains. I listen to when my body wants it. And also, more importantly, when I'm traveling, I may not have the luxury of having the meal at the same time of the day. So I like to train my body into thinking doesn't matter when you're going to eat, you're going to eat this once a day. And I've got it to the stage where I'm having a meal once a day and I feel absolutely fantastic for the entire day. Now, the one thing that has changed quite considerably is my water intake. I've gone from two to three liters originally, and now I'm very close to three and a half to four liters, but that's spread across the entire day. And that could be in a form of a whatever normal drink could be a form of a, uh, I wouldn't say tea because I don't drink tea. It'll be a form of a uh, coffee. Sometimes when I have a coffee, it'll be a form of, you know, normal water, ice water, combination of hot water. It, it, there's all sorts of combinations. But the point is, I'm very close to three and a half to four liters of water a day. And uh, it's quite important. And every third day now, roughly every third day, I add maybe a small, maybe one or two teaspoons very small teaspoons of electrolytes in that water for the day. It just keeps regulating that magnesium, the sodium, the zinc and all that that you get inside the electrolytes. And basically that regulates my body, keeps my body at the right level in case the body's not taking enough sodium for example on the day because i maybe not have you know the keto is taking quite a toll or whatever or maybe i don't have enough vitamins on that day so that those electrolytes balance me every three days i think you know doing it every day i think is not necessary you, you must do that in the beginning when you do this but i think doing this later once you're down the line like i'm eight months into this i don't need to do it every day i think i'm at the moment this last 30 days i've been doing every three days roughly I think from next week onwards, the way I feel right now, the way I've balanced everything out, I'm probably going to do electrolytes once a week. I think I'm going to do the electrolytes maybe on a midweek, so around Wednesday. I'll probably do electrolytes just to keep that body balanced through the week. 
And uh, yeah, it's, that's really the main things that have happened in terms of my health. And I feel brilliant. I feel fantastic. At the age of 51 today, very proud to have got halfway in life. Um, yes, because I regard this as halfway because mm, 100 is not the target I want to meet. I want to meet 102. You know, that's the idea one day. Who knows? Maybe if we get lucky, if we don't have anything unusual happen to us. But um, it's been a great journey. And uh, I, I want to also thank all my subscribers. Thank you to all of you who've supported me through this journey. I think it's uh, quite humbling uh, for anyone really to achieve any kind of subscription status online whether it's any social media or you know loads of friends or whatever on, on 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 sort of social media platforms you know that's a wonderful thing but i think what i really want to say thank you for is um not i think i know sorry i want to say thank you to all of you who've been very positive i mean yes i've had a couple of people that have been negative about it because you know everyone is entitled to their own opinion and your own thoughts and there's nothing wrong with it and when someone is giving me wrong, um, like bad feedback or giving me negative feedback, I'll always say, you know, um, this is why I justify what I did say. And, you know, still doesn't matter. You're entitled to your opinion. But thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to spend to, to even watch and even attempt to do feedback on something like a video that I make. Because, you know, whether you are doing a positive or a negative feedback, I'm OK with you doing feedback either way if it's positive or negative because it tells me that you took the time to watch the video and if you have taken the time whether you have a positive or negative response that's just based down to your experience or possibly your knowledge or more importantly what i've noticed is your lack of that knowledge because maybe you haven't gone through the journey and you don't know what it feels like. And most of the time, the people that do respond negatively, it's not because they want to be negative, it's because they actually don't know what these results are, because they've never tried this. You see, once you try this kind of lion diet, carnivore diet, and you do it for 30 days, first of all, you'll be blown away by the results. Then you do it for an extra 30 days, and you're gonna realize what just happened. On your third month, you're going to be absolutely blown away by the results and you will not believe your life changes from then onwards you don't want to go back that's when i noticed after my third month i noticed that yep i've done this long enough to know now what works and more importantly there is there is no way absolutely no way that i'm going to be in any way derailed from this path you see between your first month and your second month and your third month there's always apprehension because it's something new you're trying something unusual something counterintuitive in life because it's not something we've been taught since we were kids and it you know still till today you know when i think about it 250 days later i still contemplate how this whole thing works because it boggles my mind as to how deep the lies go when it comes to food and the food that we are offered in supermarkets and that and you know it's nothing to do with the vegetables and the farmers and the way you know the, it, it, it's not about that it's about the cultivation of the vegetables it's about the cultivation of you know the ground and how they add pesticides and toxins which makes it far more dangerous for us than it did 50 to 60 years ago and when it comes to processing like carbs and stuff carbs are created they're generated they're not designed to do anything other than keep us full for a very short period and more importantly they don't help our bodies our bodies yes will build a tolerance throughout our years but they will not overcome that tolerance the tolerance will overcome them and then their body changes either you'll gain weight or your hormones will change or some more some different illnesses will pop up especially things like inflammation and inflammation then is like a domino effect for the rest of your body and it's just it just creates all sorts of other problems and by dieting it's a good thing by doing keto it's a great thing no problem by but the thing is when you diet you're restricting to the point where you're saying this is a diet your your thought process is going to be wrong here because you're going to one day leave that diet and then you're going to realize wow you know going back to what i was 
which has happened to me many times in my life. I've, of, I've often lost a serious amount of weight and weight loss programs, and then I've gained it all back again, and far worse, because I treated them as diets. Because now this is not a diet for me. Eating the lion or the carnivore diet is not a diet. I hate the word diet now because it's not a diet. I'm having the best possible meat on the planet that I could afford at any one time. I'm having far better food than most carbs and vegetables would ever, ever come close to because nothing will beat things like tomahawk steaks, ribeye steaks, sirloin steaks, nothing, and, and, and mince and burger patties and that. Nothing really beats that. And you know that very well. You know that if you want to go out in a restaurant and you want to have a great meal that you can trust, you know that a steak is something that you can trust. Right? So it's not going to hurt you. That's the thing. Everyone knows this. I mean, unless you're a vegetarian or a vegan or a pescatarian. Either way, if you're a pescatarian, you're still eating fish. You're, stealing, you're still eating something natural from the ocean, which is a great thing. Nothing wrong with that. And But, you know, if you're a, veg a vegetarian or a vegan, what are you doing really? Yes, you're trying to avoid in your mind... And I don't want to upset anybody who's vegetarian or vegan, but you're trying in your mind to justify, oh, you don't want to go and kill an animal or uh, render an animal no more and then basically eat the animal because you probably have in your mind um, the psychological, emotional and spiritual drive not to do that against animals, which, by the way, I understand completely. Because I've tried vegetarian and I've tried vegan and I've tried all the others and I just couldn't do it. And it's, you know, some people can do it and it's fine. And if it works for you, if it works for you as vegans or vegetarians, if it's working for you, your eating habits like that, and you are working out and you're exercising and your body's okay and you've done your blood tests and everything looks good. If it's working for you, keep on doing it because it works for you. You see everyone's body might be human we might have the same parts as in like we have a heart we have a kidney we have livers we have legs we have all this kind of body parts but everyone is different you know don't just oh because it's a carnivore or oh because it's a lion diet oh 100 percent is going to work for me you, you just don't know right the only way you'll know is if you try it it's as simple as that in life. If you, how do you know if something's not going to work until you try it? This is not illogical, people. This is logical thinking. So if the vegetarian or the vegan stuff is working for you, that kind of diet's working for you, great. I have no problem with people like that. I, why would I? I I've, got ma I've got friends that are vegetarians and vegans, and I never tell them, oh, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. Never. It's not my place to do that. It's not, you know, if you do any kind of diet, if you do anything in life, if you work on anything in life, if you, if you do achieve something in life, it's not up to you to change other people's minds. So this is not just dieting. You should never prejudice anyone else for what you're doing. Because in life, you can only control what you do. You, you shouldn't even want to control anybody else. That's kind of a stupid thought because if you could 100% control yourself, would you be 100% the best possible version of yourself? If you are the best possible version of yourself of 100% improvement every time you do something, then you're doing things right. Then you will never need to want to actually go and change someone else. Isn't that right? So, you know, the negative feedback that I've had from people is mainly from vegetarians and vegans and just people, more importantly, that have that, that are they're not in touch with what really is out there and they don't know what this carnivore and lion diet can do purely because they've never tried it. And really, my, my responses are very simple. Try it. What's the worst that can happen? You've been on this planet for how many years? What's 30 days, 60 days, 90 days of your life? Isn't that worth trying to do something that you've never done before and seeing what the results are? And then from there, make an educated decision. Not a decision that's out of the blue or maybe because you've heard people say it. 
you know, and you think that that's the truth. You know, that, that's one of the biggest and most stupid things I've seen happen in the world and with people around the world. They will believe other people easily. You see, now you can argue the fact and you can say, well, Demetrius, we're watching you in this video and you're asking us to believe you. I'm not asking you to do this. I'm not asking you to do the, 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 any diet, let alone carnivore or lion. I'm not saying you believe me because these are my results. These are not your results. Okay. I'm saying to you, try it. If it doesn't work for you, move on, try something new, right? The point is you won't know if something does work if you don't try it. I'm not saying this is the way for you. No, it might not be the way for you, right? But so far, people that have tried it, the people that I know personally have had incredible results. And there's got to be some truth to this because I'm 250 days into this and two of the doctors that I've visited purely because I did all this, so I can recover my, my burn in my hand, which is almost 100% done. And um, the doctors that I went back to in the last couple of weeks have said to me, why are you back? I said, oh, I need to do some checks and they looked at all my, my, my vitals and everything and they checked uh, the blood takes and everything and they said, oh, well, you know, you've got a metabolism of a 25 year old now and everything is running at top condition. And I'm like, cool. And they said to me, don't come back unless you see something difficult or dangerous happening. And I'm like, great. You know, so at the end of the day, it worked for me. And I'm thankful. On my birthday, 27th of October, 2024, at the age of 51, I can say that I not only look better and feel better and work better, operate my life better, uh, operate everything I do inside and out better than I ever did, even when I was in my 20s. That's just insanity for me it still boggles my mind i've got to the stage that i've had these benefits and by the way i'm not perfection excuse me i'm not perfection at the moment i've still got roughly i mean i've lost the 47 kilos yes and i've sort of plateaued over that 47 i'm not exactly under 100 kilograms yet i've always had a heavy body set because i've been a rugby player when i was younger and i've had i've got extremely muscular legs and um that weight is not going to go down easily, but I do want to drop an additional 20 kilograms, which is a fair amount. It's close to three stones in British pounds, basically, and um, it will happen. But that's my target for this for this year coming. So between now and my 52nd birthday, I want to have lost the 20 kilos that I have and I want to gain muscle because I'm starting to work out now. I don't want to gain muscle and I want to get my eight pack that I had when I was 18 years old because I had an eight pack when I was younger and I was seriously fit when I was younger. So my body is starting to shape up. But that in my first target for my first year doing this, or at least <laughs> the last 250 days, let's say my second target is the next 250 days, um, was to reach a stage where I have improved leaps and bounds and at the stage now where i'm at to be able to take the next step and that is to start shaping my body not to start just the loss of weight i'm done with losing weight now i want to gain that muscle back i'm now at that level and i've reached the milestones that i wanted to reach for this year for the 2024 year and i've done it before the end of the year i've done it on my birthday 27th of october and that was my target february the 19th when i started this my objective was to heal my burn as quickly as possible. It was a first degree burn. If you go back and watch the videos, you'll see what I mean. And I was, you know, pretty large. I was 147 kilograms. For my height, it's terrible. And I was never that that weight. And I needed to do something. And I did, but I took the extreme and I went lion diet. I'm the kind of person that goes all in. I don't mess about, you know. Uh, I'm a man. I, I, I just deal with things. I get it done. You know, as a man, you, you're taught to don't moan, don't complain, get it done. Because that's what we are. There's no point complaining about something. 
You complain about something. You're not doing anything. You're not making a change. You don't make a change. Nothing changes. Okay. There's things that I've learned over time, but now they're starting to dig into my brain. And my results have been fantastic for the last 250 days. So the next set of results is to truly sculpt myself and get my, myself to the point where I am the best possible version I could ever be at the age of 52. That's what my target is. And I will get there. I mean, it's just going to take some time, but I know what I need to do. And I want to, you know, have the same kind of drive that I've had the last 250 days. My motivation was, yes, to recover from the burn. My next motivation is to just become the best possible pers uh, version of me. So, and that includes not just physically getting fit, but it includes doing so many more things in life. So I'm going to take this opportunity to talk to you about one more last thing before I let you go. I know this has been a, a sort of longish video of about 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer than that. But I want to talk to you about one other thing that I've started doing, and that is my don't say it, do it campaign. The idea of don't say it and then do it is something that has stuck in my brain since the good old days of when I was 13 years old, 12 years old, 13 years old, when I had one of my teachers, I will never forget her, Mrs. Donaldson. She may not be alive anymore. I need, I need to find out if she still is. I'm going back to South Africa in December and I'm probably going to find that out. It's something I need to do and go and tell her and thank her if she's around, if not at least her family. Mrs. Donaldson used to tell me one very crazy thing. Demetrius, don't say it, do it. And it used to grind me up the wrong way. Hey, When I was a kid, I didn't understand this. You know, as you're a kid, you get annoyed by stuff. Because you think, what is this? What? This doesn't make any sense. This doesn't mean anything to me right now. I kid you not, Mrs. Donaldson, if you're alive or not, or if you're up there or not, You'll hear me either way. I get it. I finally get it. <laughs> At the age of 51, I finally get it. And I've now created this campaign and this part of my business, one part of my, one aspect of one of the businesses I run is life coaching, positive thinking, psychological evaluation of people, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a sportsman per se, although I've played many sports in my life. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm none of that stuff. I'm using my experience, the things I've learned, my 35 years of teaching people, which I have done in technology spheres, and I am very well versed in communicating with people online, communicating face to face. I've done master of ceremonies. I've qualified. I have done speeches live to thousands of people. So I am able to communicate this a lot easier, but I'm going to use all my experience and bring everything I've learned to anyone who's interested in terms of turning their life around. And you know, if it helps you in any way, if I can make a small dent in your life and help you by 1%, that would be enough for me. So my carnivore business, which is goodcarnivore.com, that is going to be all about the food intake. The uh, don't say it, do it part of the business is all going to be about life coaching. And I've already helped a number of people already, and I've done it without it being a business. And they've all had great improvements and they're all very pleased and they've been telling me listen Demetrius why don't you make a business out of this because you're really good at it I'm like okay I'll try this um, and I've always wanted to be a life coach and I needed to get myself body body and mentally at the right place and now that I have both I mean my mental capabilities have always been very sharp for many years but now they're just being that now they're basically like on steroids but the the idea is that now my body is physically at the right level to keep up with my mind. And now I could say comfortably, yes, now I can go and be a person that can talk in front of a public and like stand in front of 
people and talk about this subject specifically, not the, the other stuff I teach. So I'm now going to be pushing the whole idea of life coaching. That's going to be my next strategy for 2025. The next couple of months is to get this portfolio and build it up to the point where I have everything up and running. And then from January onwards, this is going to become a very new focus for me because I believe I can help. Now, if I can help 1%, that's great. If I can help 5%, even better. If I can help 10%, wonderful. If I can help you at 100%, my goodness gracious me, that'll mean that I have achieved things in life I never thought were possible. So my point is, if you want me to work with you and you can work with me in some way to help you overcome things in life, I'm here to assist. I'll have a website. You can book me for a certain amount of time. I'm not going to charge a lot of money for that because I don't believe in that. I make enough money with my technology businesses. So I don't need to worry about that. But I really want to push this to the level where I can help people. And um, I'm here for discourse. I'm here for communication. If you can, if you have an alternative view, if you believe, oh, you're a vegan or a vegetarian or you eat, a, you're a pescatarian or you, you know, you eat this kind of way and you want to justify things and you want to prove things, talk to me. Let's discuss this in an open conversation. I am not scared to have discourse to communicate. There is no just, there's no prejudice. There's no. I'm not putting anyone down. I certainly won't make you feel bad about anything because everyone has a right to their own opinion in their own lives and the way they want to run it. I honestly want to build my channel and do live conferences, live shows. I want to do sort of live interviews. I'm very much influenced by uh, people like Joe Rogan. I'm influenced by Jordan Peterson. I'm more influenced by uh, Simon Sinek, you know, there's many, many people that have influenced me over time over many years when it comes to public speaking. And now that I've achieved my physical and mental status at the right level, I, I, I need to give back. I want to give back to everyone who's helped me. And also want to give back to people that, that need help and possibly just need that extra nudge to get them at the right level. And, you know, if I can help, great. Otherwise, Let's cut that video now and end off today. I want to go and enjoy the rest of my birthday. It's now three o'clock in the afternoon. I want to thank you all for this wonderful opportunity on YouTube to be able to share my thoughts, uh, be as honest as I can, because, you know, honesty and being transparent is the most important thing to me. And I want to be as genuine as I can because there's so much nonsense around the world today. There's so much falseness and so much DEI, you know, uh, ideological agendas, uh, political motivations, all that. And, you know, none of that stuff is really interesting to me because life is already too short to worry about things like that. I want to worry about humanity. I want to think about how humans do things. We're all humans. We all live on this planet. We have a common denominator. The common denominator is we live and then we die. The other common denominator is we come into this world with nothing. We spend most of our lives trying to achieve things and attain things. And at the end of the day, we die back again with nothing. Think about it very carefully, what I'm saying to you. The most important currency that we have in this world today is your time. It's not money. Money helps you be comfortable and it assists you in getting things done a lot quicker, a lot more efficiently. Yes, but it's not everything. It's not happiness. It's not joy. And it's not health. You know, the most important things are time, your health, family, community, and then without the most important thing out of those, health, your time, your health, your family, community, people around you, right? You've got to help people as well. Don't always try to help yourself. If you don't have those four pillars strengthened by faith, Whatever God you believe in, whatever energy you believe in, whatever power you believe in, 
even if you don't believe in anything, in whatever you do believe in, that main thing that has created everything, without that pillar of strength, which will turn that into a fist, it takes all these things that you are, that you deal with in life, you know, the whole idea of your time that you spend in life, how well you use that time, because you don't have much time in the world. If we're lucky, we get past 80 years. The family that you have, I'm not very, very successful at this. It, it's been a very difficult journey when it comes to having family on my side. My family is okay-ish, all right? But when it comes to being married and having kids, I've been down that road and I had a horrible divorce and I, I don't want to repeat all that again. And maybe it'll never happen again. So I'm not at that level again. So that's not been very successful for me. Community. If you don't love your neighbors, you don't love the people you work with, you don't work with the people you work with and try to help them. If you don't get to that point where you can help others and be community driven, then you're never going to satisfy your own soul. Believe me, helping others makes you feel better in life. Trust me on that. And of course, ultimately, you know, your health. If you don't work on your health, what are you trying to do? You're trying to die earlier. You're really that nihilistic that you want to leave earlier on this planet or from this planet. Surely you want to live as long as possible and enjoy what this gift is that we have. But you see, without the most important thing of all, and that is your the one thing that drives you, that pins you down, the faith, which closes that fist and makes you strong, you know, gives you that power that you need, it makes you tough in this world so that you can overcome anything. Without that, without that pillar, God, faith, whatever you believe in, without that, if you don't have that, what do you have? You have a crumbling life. You have a loose life. You don't have something that is tight, okay? That can handle the storm. It can handle typhoons. It can handle the worst things that can possibly happen in your life. Uh, mine's not an exact fist, no. I have my faith. I am getting my health. So this is dangling. I have community. I'm trying to help as much as I can. I help as many people as I can. I teach as many people as I can. That gives me that fulfillment. My family is crumbling. It's a little bit difficult because it's very, very difficult to deal with. Uh, I have a mom who lives on, you know, in South Africa. She's not with me here in the UK. I'm trying to bring her here. Um, it's quite tricky and, and difficult to deal with situation with my sister here in the UK. It's always been challenging. I'm not married again. I haven't married, remarried, I haven't got kids. So that family element for me is dangling. So there's two things in my life that are sort of dangling. And my time, oh, I've got that under control now. So I've got one, two, three out of the five in synchronize, in perfect sync. I need to dangle the other two and get those perfect. So that my fist is not just, you know, like this. You know, it's not nice and tight to get me through everything. You know, I, I needed to explain it with an analogy like that because I need you to understand that in life, everything is temporary. What will happen will pass. What happens will pass, even the good things and the bad things. So whichever way you look at it, you don't have much time in the world Use your time effectively to boost everything else. So that one aspect in your fist needs to boost because that's the least amount of things that you have. That's why it's the smallest thing that needs to be capitalized so that you can boost your health, family, community and your faith. So that time needs to be used at your optimal possible condition to boost everything. It's not that easy to do. It's quite a challenge. But begin with your health because that helps everything else all right everyone i don't want to preach anymore because it may sound like i'm preaching i'm just excited it's my birthday you know 51 years old and i feel happy today because it's not just a birthday it's because it's my healthiest birthday that i've had in at least 35 years and uh 
It's just a wonderful feeling. Um, kind of surreal, actually. And I want to thank you all for listening to me. Thank you all for taking the time to watch my videos and subscribing. My details will be at the bottom if you wish to subscribe. And I will be making a lot more videos now coming up. And a lot more interesting videos. But I want to say thank you to all. And I wish you all great health. Great success. Great love and joy. Strong faith. And above all good use of your time thank you everyone this is demetrius here from ob pixel once again and my my brands ob pixel ob sec i have goodcarnival.com i have don't say it do it and of course as a media person as well i have my photography and videography business the ob photo business and uh, i want to thank you all for your time and signing out